Welcome to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast for club owners, operators, and fitness professionals. Each week, host Brian O'Rourke brings you an expert interview with a global influencer at the crossroads of fitness and technology. You gain the insights, tools, and inspiration you need to stay connected to the pulse for what matters most for your business in the age of exponential technologies. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. I am your host, Brian O'Rourke, and welcome to February 2020. We're already in February, and that means, uh, for all of you who are paying attention to the URSA Convention, it is coming up uh, in the middle of March, uh, 18th through the 21st, in San Diego. I hope to see you on Saturday morning at 1015 where I'll be exploring a digital in the fitness arena again. I look forward to uh, seeing you there. Um, And today, one of the things I'll be talking about in my talk that I've spoken about before is voice. And Carrie Roberts, who I've known now for a decade, um, you know, who is um, into content marketing, um, she has a podcast I was on recently uh, on voice, and it will be in the show notes Uh, That's the Inside Voice podcast. We explore today the implications of voice. And for a lot of you that I talk to about, you know, needing a strategy, this is the next best, you know, big thing, a thing that all brands need to really be paying attention to. Its implications are fairly significant. And Carrie and I speak about that today in the podcast. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be talking about voice with Carrie Roberts. Good morning, Carrie. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to our talk about voice uh, this morning. How are you? I'm good. It's so great to connect again, Brian. I know we've known each other for a long time, so I'm excited to be here. Well, you know, I really enjoyed being on your Inside Voice podcast uh, recently. And the the link will be in the show notes for everyone. And as I mentioned in the intro, Carrie... um, Hosts that along with a few other podcasts she works on, um, and really has been focusing on voice. I've written about voice. I started writing about it, talking about it over three years ago, um, as the next kind of universal, or not universal, but well, I guess would be universal, Carrie. But major uh, technology human interface. You've you know you've spent a lot of time on this, um, so I'd like to hear you know, your views and some stats on what's going on in other industries, Carrie, when it comes to voice interface. Yeah. So as you said, I mean, voice has been around for a little while for the last, I would say really the last three or four years and each year it's growing and growing. Um, And I think what's interesting about it is that anyone can do it. I mean, as you and I've talked before, you know, you don't have to push a button or learn different applications we talk every day. And in fact, the people who adopted it first were young children and older adults. And so when you have those populations, two populations that are craving independence, they want to do things on their own. And being able to talk to a device of some sort to say, turn on Disney, turn on the TV, I need help with this, tell me what the weather is, Um, it starts to kind of grow. And then other people start to say, well, how else can we use that? Um, You know, it's great because it saves us time. It's very efficient. We can multitask while we do it. Um, We can have a better experience with voice technology in some ways than we do with certain interactions with people sometimes. It helps internal teams. Um, And then just some stats, which, uh, you know, Edison Research and VoiceBot.ai are two of the great places for audio and, and podcasting and voice stats. And, you know, they have said 21% of Americans own smart speakers. Um, you know, smart speakers, the sales are estimated to rise to 35% globally um, to 92 million units. So you have people using it. I think most people have an Amazon device of some sort um, that they have about 60% of the market. But now Google Home has come into play. So you have that kind of secondary. Um, and then you have Samsung Bixby. Uh, coming in third, and then as well as um, Apple and Cortana for Microsoft kind of coming in at the tail end as well. So it's something that we're seeing that is growing, um, you know, across all different areas, and especially in the healthcare space as well. That is probably one of the areas that is being utilized the most. Um, I can give a couple examples within that. There is a company called Speak2, for example, 
And they have created software that works with voice technology that is used within nursing homes. So one of the problems that nursing homes were noticing was that they are paying so much for uh, medical staff. And a lot of times the residents were asking for things like, can you turn on the TV? Can I get something to eat? Can you help me with this or that? Things that didn't really require medical attention. And so this particular company with voice technology works with nursing homes to be able to, again, allow a little more independence for the residents. They make them feel less lonely, makes them feel more connected. Um, and it also saves the nursing homes money. You know, they don't have to be spending so much money on medical services when they're not being needed. So you're seeing a, a huge shift. And again, the healthcare space is definitely leading it, I think. Uh, but there's a lot of different other areas that are utilizing it as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing um, technology when you think about how the application of these types of things you're describing and others, you know, for many of the listeners, uh, for example, your at-home experiences where I can t ask uh, my uh, device, my Amazon device, uh, what's on my calendar today? or what the weather is, or, you know, play my favorite radio station, or whatever, or order whatever I need. This, this didn't exist 36 months ago, for the most part, for most people. And to see it emerge like this, really to see it now in cars, to see it in homes, to see it in nursing homes, as you described, it's really, I think, going to change a lot about the adverse impacts of how a lot of humans have had to interface with technology because you don't have to look at the screen as much to get what you need. Um, and I think that's a great thing to, to have for people in the sense of making it easier to take advantage of these technologies. And then also these technologies are getting smarter. You know, some people have been frustrated by the way voice interface might've worked with Siri or other platforms where you're asking and it can't really understand, but it, the systems are continuing to learn, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's what's fascinating to me. Um, you know, again, you're looking at Amazon and Google definitely leading in the voice space at this point. Um, and one of the things, you know, Google has a bunch of teams uh, where they work with people of all different dialects. Um, they have a team where that works with people who have had strokes, for example, and they have them speak to the device and they work on utilizing their voice so that anyone, for example, that's had a stroke would be able to talk to the device and it could hear them and understand them. So they're working on ways to understand different ways of speaking. Uh, I just spoke with someone the other day, uh, the CEO of Behavioral Signals, um, Rana, who they are all about creating the how of what we're doing, um, meaning like the emotional intelligence of voice, which is crazy to think. I mean, I think people <laughs> in general have a hard time with emotional intelligence, and now you're saying an AI can have it. Um, there have been studies that have been done at universities. Um, one was done in Yale fairly recently that showcases that when we use our voice, there's actually more empathy. Um, we actually get the truth of somebody more through their voice rather than uh, actually interacting with them in person or seeing them. And so being able to replicate how somebody is saying something, not just what makes a difference. So for example, somebody could say something, but if there's a sense of sarcasm in it, that is going to to be detected differently in how someone is speaking to you. And so there's a whole technology working on that. So um, it's very interesting, you know, we're working on it from an emotional standpoint, we're working on it from uh, understanding different dialects and different languages, understanding how we speak as humans, you know, we don't speak very direct, we do a lot of uh, things where we kind of change our what we're thinking and our patterns and being able to have voice do the same. So um, it is definitely going in that direction. It's improving every single year. And it's incredible to see that machines are able to do that. Yeah. And I just think it's going to continue. Um, it's going to be more and more interesting. And as it, as the technologies move into other areas of our lives, uh, um, you know, for the listeners that, uh, you know, as you know, this is fitness plus technology podcast. But I'd like to go in a little bit of your background and how we met to kind of connect the dots for listeners, Carrie, because you were in the fitness business and dance. And I think we met through that some time ago. I think you were certified in Les Mills and some other programming. And I think we bumped into each other that way. And we known each other for a number of years. Tell the listeners a little bit about your background in fitness and dance. Yeah, so I have been a dancer all of my life. I got a BFA in dance when I went to university. 
Um, and then at the same time, I got certified as a trainer. I was a group fitness instructor. Um, I did group fitness management, wellness management. I owned a dance studio. So I was in health and fitness for a very long time, 10 plus years. Um, and you and I actually met via LinkedIn back in 2009, which is crazy to think that it's been about oh, 10 wow. years since I've known you. And yeah, <laughs> and we've never met in person, which is also extra crazy. Um, I think, you know, I have had for for the listeners that know Brian or maybe don't know Brian as well, I think one of the things that I truly love about you and admire about you is your passion for what you do and you're wanting to help others succeed in a genuine way. And you have always done that for me. I mean, I had reached out to you in 2009. Again, LinkedIn was, was still fairly new and had asked you questions about fitness. You know, as I was trying to grow my career coming out of college, um, then when I opened the studio, I asked you questions and I've told you many times, you know, I feel like you and I chat maybe a year or so. And I always have this like big business question. And when I talk to you, you always bring the truth. You always bring the reality. You never sugarcoat anything, um, but you bring it with, with honesty, with care um, and with the intention to help me go in the direction based on what I'm telling you. And, and every time you've given me uh, advice and feedback, it's been extremely helpful and really kind of changed how I've done things. So I appreciate that so much. Um, and when I did, you know, the dance studio, it was funny for me because I was like, oh, I thought that's what I was going to do forever. And then I felt like, you know, I felt a little stuck kind of being uh, in one location with a brick and mortar type of business. And I found that I really loved the branding, the, the marketing. Um, I was doing podcasting at the time and so kind of transitioned into a little bit more of what I do now. Yeah, which is fantastic. And thank you for your kind words. And I think that, you know, your background in fitness and now, you know, with the work you're doing, uh, you know, in the tech arena and other arenas, content, et cetera, I'm sure you have some thoughts on what the voice interface means for the industry space. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a very intriguing because we're just getting started, I think, on everything, as you'd mentioned before, from behavioral coaching to, uh, pragmatic fitness uh, coaching, et cetera, through voice interface. What Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. So when it comes to voice, there's a couple things. So with the Amazon Alexa device, it's, it's not on Google. It's only on Amazon Alexa. They have what's called flash briefings. Mm -hmm. It's the free thing you can do. It's very similar to podcasting, except the idea is that they're shorter. Um, and so, you know, you've heard before, like there's so many websites, you know, start a podcast. Well, now there's so many podcasts, I encourage people to start a flash briefing. Um, and so basically it could be news, it could be an idea, you know, something that you're kind of putting out on a daily or, or fairly daily consistent basis um, to get, uh, you know, a community. Um, we just had, uh, there was an event I was at for voice. Uh, the number one flash briefing is the Gaming Observer. It is, was started by a 21-year-old young man. Um, he has 15,000 people that listen to him daily. Um, so that's kind of an easy way to get involved. Um, I think when you're talking about voice experiences and voice skills, um, some people, if they've used voice, may have heard of the seven minute workout. Um, that's a pretty popular one. I can go onto my device and ask to launch it and it will take me through a seven minute workout virtually, right? So I, I'm listening to them. I can do it anywhere. They've been very successful with that. Um, you know, you can, you and I've talked about when we did it on the other podcast, you know, you could be able to purchase memberships, you know, Hey, I want to go to this gym. Can you sign me up? Um, and I think the other space really emerging within voice is what's called hearables. Um, so hearables are any device that goes into your ear. So you can think of, you know, hearing aids are a type of hearable and there are ones that are comboing and then you have the AirPods. So AirPods are a form of hearables. Um, where they're in your ear all the time, you could have a coach in your ear. You could be interacting in a fitness facility um, and go up to various pieces of equipment and not really know what to be doing. Um, and so that coach for that voice can kind of guide you through. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways that we could be utilizing voice. And the whole idea is to be thinking about how can I help my customer, my consumer, whatever it is, um, in the most efficient way. So that really goes back to branding, which is kind of what I do, and strategy, which is about we don't want to just in, use the tech because it's there. Um, if it's going to make things harder, it doesn't make sense. You really want to go through what is it that the person needs? Can it be done in a more efficient way, in a more effective way through voice technology? That's right. And it's a whole user experience and being aware of those practical things to create useful useful tools and then you as you had alluded to with the uh, the hearables you know now these devices and i'm looking at my um, apple devices now 
um, you know, the ambient noise settings. So very soon people wearing um, devices in their ears all the time or, or a lot of the time will become a thing. Um, and I think it's going to be part of a revolution that moves away from uh, time and attention on screen uh, to where more intelligent agents will be interfacing with you through voice and listening back more and more effectively so that you're not necessarily having to look at a screen or, or you know, do anything like that. It's kind of uh, uh, personalized to you, to you and, and, and creates a lot of utility and functionality in day-to-day you know, living in anything you're doing, whether it's exercise or diet or, or entertainment or, or what have you. So, yeah, I think those are going to be some pretty interesting uh, developments. Um, and I think they will lead to the kind of death of the smartphone as we know it eventually. Yeah, which I, uh, to be honest, that would be exciting. I think uh, from a fitness perspective, you know, when you're sitting at a desk all day or on your phone, you know, your posture starts to hurt, you know, to be able to kind of talk at my computer, for example, and stand up or walk around and have it um, do the tasks that I need just through my voice would be incredible, I think, for our posture, overall health. Um, There's just a lot of great things that are to come with the technology. Yeah, I agree. And, and as you pointed out, really understanding the user experience and how to create real valuable uh, solutions. The truth is, is that developing these things on the development platforms like Amazon's is not, you don't have to be a technical genius to do this. I mean, you know, you know, uh, you know the, the platforms are there. It's just figuring out, hey, what could be done that creates a lot of value? So, you know, for a lot of people thinking about this, do you have any recommendations as to getting into voice and, and how to go about it? Should they confer with somebody like you or how, how can they figure that out? Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's definitely, it's like anything else, right? So if we use a fitness example, you can go to a gym and work out yourself or you can get a trainer. They're two very different experiences. Um, So you can definitely go, Amazon has what's called blueprints. um, So you can go through their thing and create a skill. Um, There are plenty of companies such as Witlingo, um, Voiceify, where they are basically, they created the coding. So you don't have to know any coding. You can just create your own skill. Um, But there's a lot of that go into voice. So, uh, I am definitely more on the branding side, um, really making sure people understand who they are, what they want, who they're trying to attract. I think a lot of people forget that piece. Um, And then you kind of go into what's the strategy, what's the point of it. Um, Then you've got to create what's called the conversational design. So really thinking about what is the skill? What am I writing? How would this interact? You know, how we write um, is not the same in how we speak. So making sure we're going through that process. Um, And then a lot of it is testing, you know, having people test. Um, before you fully launch a few different times. I think it is definitely something people can go and explore on their own and test out if somebody is a larger company or has kind of the budget or larger implications of what they want to do. I'd recommend, you know, checking out an agency or working with a developer. There's a lot of different people in the space. Um, But the idea is to really understand you know, what is it that can be used for voice? How do I go through it? What is the process? Um, And if you're on, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter are definitely the biggest places for the voice community. Um, So if you hashtag voice first or hashtag voice tech, um, you will find a lot of people in the space, a lot of people discussing. Um, It's a very creative, welcoming community. I think that's my favorite part about it. I've never seen a community that where competitors are sitting in the same room and working together. So we are still at a point now where people uh, want to help one another so you can reach out to anyone in the space um, and we are happy to help you. That's, that's great when you, when you have that kind of environment. And, um, you know, I, I'd really encourage people uh, listening on the podcast today to heed uh, Carrie's words and to, to look at those hashtags and start thinking about voice and their business models. Uh, Carrie, any other final thoughts at all on voice today for the listeners that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think voice is something that it's not just a gimmick. It's not just something that's here for a bit and going to go away. It reminds me very much of when social media first came out. You know, Facebook came out. It was like, oh, it's for schools. Nobody thought twice about it. Now we have to use it. Um, And I think voice is and will continue to be the same way. So instead of, you know, feeling uncomfortable about it, you know, ask questions, do the research, find out who knows about things, find out how you can use it for your business 
or maybe you even want to try, you know, a side hustle. You want to try something yourself. I mean, a lot of the things that are happening are people doing it on the side, little startups, um, and they're growing. So I just encourage you to get educated on it and really think about how you could utilize it for your business, whether it's internally or externally with your potential customers. That's great, great advice. And everyone, I would encourage you to connect with Carrie in the show notes. We're going to have all our various profiles on social. Carrie, thank you so much. You've been a great colleague and friend over the years. Um, I really appreciate uh, your kind words and, uh, and watching you continue to develop your career and impact to the world. Thank you so much, Brian. Excited to be here and to know you as well. Take care. Hello, listeners. This is Brian O'Rourke, and thanks so much for listening to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. The podcast is made possible by the Fitness Industry Technology Council, a consortium of global brands working together to enhance the adoption of technologies in the fitness space. Our company, Videri Ventures, which is invested in Vertimax, Matazumo, Gold's Gym, Houston, Texas, and Fitness 24-7 Thailand, also underwrites the podcast along with our service companies, Integris Advisors, Moon Mission Media, and others. Please feel free to share this podcast with your colleagues. And if I can be of any assistance to you, don't hesitate to reach out brianklerourke at gmail.com or find me on any of the major social networks. Have a great day and thanks for listening.